In this lesson, we look at some of the settings and considerations, particular to targeting Adobe Air for mobile devices. So here we have a basic mobile project here, and it's targeting Air 3.2 for Android. So let's hit this little wrench here to go to our application settings. So here it takes us to Air for Android settings, and we can see that for Android, we're going to generate an APK file. And that's the native Android extension for applications that are installed on these devices. Here we give the application an app name, and we can give it an ID as well. Notice that whenever we're publishing for Android, that we actually get air dot prepended to our actual app ID. And that's just to identify it as an air project. So for the app ID, we would use reverse domain naming. So something like com dot Joseph Lebrec dot mobile project. And this would be a nice valid app ID for us. We can give the version number here as well as a version label if we want to. And we can choose whether the aspect ratio of our project is going to be portrait, landscape, or auto. We can choose whether it's full screen for Android or if we're going to just make it have our application and retain the little Android notification bar at the top. And here's the auto orientation setting that we should set if we do set aspect ratio to auto up here. We can then choose our render mode. So whether we want that to be auto, CPU, GPU, or direct. Now when you choose direct, that's what you choose if you're using something like stage video or stage 3D. So here we have our included files. So we can include more files in here if we want to, or even whole folders if we want. And by default, Flash Professional is going to place our SWIFT and our XML manifest file in there. All of the information we're editing in these settings actually gets written to this XML manifest file. So then the deployment tab. Here we choose a certificate. So this is a signing certificate that we can use for Android. And you will have to create the certificate yourself by using this little dialog here. And it's very easy to go through and just write your information in here, basically your name, your organization name if needed, and so forth. Make sure you remember your password. And the validity period for Android, for Google Play, the Android market, must be 25 years. So that gets filled in there automatically, but it's very important. So then we can choose our Android deployment type. Is this actually a release for devices? Is this a release for the emulator? So that's the Android emulator that you can download and install from Google. Or is this simply a debug release? If this is a debug release, note here that we can actually debug over wireless if we want to using this wireless network connection and it automatically picks up our local network address here. We can choose whether to embed the air runtime within our application or to not embed it and instead prompt the user to get the air runtime from either the Android market or the Amazon App Store, depending on where we're deploying to. So there are balances here. Your application is gonna be smaller if you have the air runtime separate, whereas if you embed it, it's going to add a bit extra to your application when you actually compile it. So here are some choices for post-publication. So after it compiles and publishes the APK, if we have an Android device attached to our machine, we can install the application and optionally launch the application on the device automatically. This next tab is for icons. Here we're able to define the three icon sizes that are used in Android applications. So 36 pixels, 48, and 72. So you just browse for them, and when they're assigned to each of those, you'll get a preview here as well. Here we have Android permissions. So we can choose to just tick this box off, and in this case, we'll have to actually manage all the permissions by manually editing our manifest XML file through some sort of a text editor like Notepad or something. Or we can have this GUI do it by just choosing what we actually need. So we'll need internet access, and let's say maybe we need camera and record audio. 
So these are choices we can make in order to give permissions when somebody actually installs this on a device. And then we have languages. This is actually new to Flash Professional CS6. We're able to choose the supported languages for our application. So that's great for Android, but what if we're actually publishing for iOS? Let's choose iOS here and hit the wrench again. So now we see Air for iOS settings, and a lot of these are very, very similar. Here we're publishing an IPA for iOS instead of an APK. We have an app name, version number, so a lot of this is really the same. We have the aspect ratio again, portrait, landscape, or audio. We can choose full screen or not, auto orientation, toggle right here, and again, render mode. If we want to use stage 3D, make sure we choose that direct render mode. And we can also choose which devices we want to target. So iPhone, iPad, or both. We can also choose the resolution. Is this a standard resolution or is this a retina display? So high resolution. And again, included files just like Android. For deployment, we need to go through and browse for our certificate. So it's an iOS certificate that you get from Apple. And also a provisioning profile. So you have to browse and select for that. This is also generated by Apple. You give your app an ID here, just like before. And for deployment type, you can choose quick publishing for device, quick publishing for device debug. And notice that we can also wirelessly debug our device with iOS now. Or we can choose deployment via ad hoc or the Apple App Store. So if you were shooting up to the App Store, this is what you would want to choose. We also have the ability to define our different icons here. And you'll notice that some of them are defined for iPad specifically. And again, languages that are supported in the application. So this lesson has been a run through of a lot of the different device considerations, configuration, profiles for both iOS and Android when targeting these devices through Air and Flash Professional CS6.